Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. I do have one quick favor before we get to the video that you came here for, and that is very simply this. You see that little red subscribe button below this video? Go ahead, smash that subscribe button. It really does help me. It really does help this channel grow and my audience grow. So go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. And now, here is the video that you came here for. But I do want to start with a much, much, much more serious topic. And that is, of course, what happened on Tuesday morning with Tiger Woods. And you don't need me to tell you that it was a very scary situation. Tiger Woods in a single car crash, whatever you want to call it. His car flipped over two, three, four times, whatever. He had to be extracted and he had to be rushed to a hospital um, in L.A. for emergency surgery. And I know that we don't normally talk this kind of stuff, but again, sometimes in life there are bigger topics than a game, a result, a tournament, a event, a whatever. And this was a very scary situation involving a sports icon, and we got to talk about it. And so let me start just very simply by saying, uh, you know, I, I, I know I speak for everybody when I say, let's just all say a small prayer for Tiger Woods. I know that according to all reports, his injuries are non-life-threatening. It appears as though he will survive, but as we'll get into in a minute, uh, it's going to be a long road to recovery. His actual golf future is very much in jeopardy, uh, and it's just a continuation of, of a decade of just struggles for this guy away from the course. And I know some of it is self-inflicted. There was obviously a situation with his wife. There was a situation where he passed out in his car, and it was later found out that he had taken too many painkillers. So I'm not sitting here and saying that Tiger Woods is a saint and all these bad things are happening. But when you take those two situations, when you take all of his injuries on the course, I looked it up, five back surgeries that he's had at this point, uh, knee surgery for a torn ACL, and now a car crash, it's just one bad thing after another for this poor guy. And like I said, I, I just hope he makes uh, a full recovery and he is able to do the things that he loves, which appear to be, most importantly, uh, spending time with his kids and his loved ones. And that is one thing I will give Tiger Woods credit for, is that he, believe, uh, he appears to be a very caring and loving father. We just saw him on the course a few weeks ago with his son, Charlie, playing and that was a really awesome moment and frankly you know I just hope Tiger Woods gets more of those uh, a couple things I, I know a lot of you and, and what I want to do over the next couple minutes is kind of contextualize what happened on uh, on Tuesday and to be clear again this isn't hot take tour like this isn't what that's about what this is about is that Tiger Woods is an icon you guys are busy you're driving to work you're driving home from work you're at the gym you're doing whatever it is that you do you don't have time to look up every single detail of this report and so I, again I just want to contextualize it for you and so first of all what I would say is as I said a minute ago non-life-threatening injuries which is obviously great news but it doesn't mean that they are not very, very, very serious injuries. And I'm not going to try to break down what it all means and what, what happened and what the doctors did. All I can tell you is what I read, what I heard on SportsCenter right before I started recording. And what it sounds like is it's going to be a long road to recovery for Tiger Woods uh, just to do normal things again. Forget golf, and we'll get into golf in a minute. But it's going to be a long process. Um, you know, I, I was reading uh, Dr. Chow. He's a, a medical expert, former San Diego Chargers, now LA Chargers team doctor. He comes on my radio show often. He said that, that this is going to be a long, long, long recovery process. The idea of even playing golf in 2021 is completely out of the question. I saw on SportsCenter, Lindsay Theory, another person that I know on ESPN, said that they are doing surgeries just to set up the next round of surgeries, and that, again, this is going to be a very long process on the road to recovery. And so I think that is the first and most important thing that you just, in terms of what you need to know. If you were hoping to see Tiger Woods on the course in, in a month, two months, three months, that ain't going to happen. Um, and I'll just be blunt, without being a doctor, just reading other doctors and smart people, you know, I think we need to start thinking about a world where it's going to be a very long time before Tiger Woods plays golf again if he plays at all. And again, in the grand scheme, I understand golf is not important. This guy, you know whatever. It was a scary situation. Golf is second, you know, to, to everything else.
But obviously, we, we all love watching him golf. He loves playing golf. And I think we all hoped in that 2019 Masters, when he won the Masters two years ago, that that was going to be the start of this incredible uh, recovery story and this incredible comeback. And it does not appear as though it's going to happen. First of all, I mean, this was a guy that was battling all sorts of stuff even before this circumstance happened, this situation with the car crash on Tuesday. As I said, five back surgeries, one recently, bad knee, and now you add this on top of all of that at 45 years old, and I think we have to accept that this is probably, that we probably live in a world where Tiger Woods may never play golf again, according to what I'm reading, and if he does, to expect him to come back and play at a high level probably just isn't going to happen, not just because of this injury that happened in the car crash, but also what has happened previously uh, with all his other surgeries. The second thing I would say is, listen, some of you are going to be mad at me for saying this. I just feel bad for the guy. And I know that, again, many of his issues have been self-inflicted, his situation with his wife, um, you know, uh, uh, you know the, the, the painkillers. I'm not excusing what he has done. But what I will tell you also is, for all the money, all the fame, all the success, everything that he has that we all envy, the private jets and the money and the this and the that, he hasn't had an easy life. And, and, and I go back to, uh, I read that biography that was written by Armin Katayan. I don't know how many of you have had a chance to read it. It is one of the best sports biographies I have ever read. If you do nothing else, if you take nothing else out of this besides uh, what I talk about with Sean Farnham later, uh, take, take, if you take nothing else away, take this. When you have a minute, go get that book, order it off Amazon, because it is one of the most eye-opening things that I have ever read. Again, for all the success, this was a guy that, that didn't have much of a childhood, didn't have friends, didn't really associate with people outside of his father and his mother, very tough childhood for a, a, a single child uh, with, with, with the circumstances that he was raised in, and yes, it all ended up working out, he made a lot of money, all that stuff. But what is money uh, without happiness and without the people around you to share it with? And he, to this day, I think has has a small circle because of it. And so I do feel bad. I do encourage you to read that book because even though, again, he has all the money in the world, what is it worth if he can't share it with friends, family, loved ones? Um, and it has not been easy for Tiger Woods if you go read the book. And I'm not talking about the decisions that he made with his wife and all that stuff. I'm talking about before that he did not have an easy childhood. And this, while not related to any of that, is just the next thing that he has to overcome. And I, and I do feel genuinely bad for him. Finally, the last thing I'll say, and then we will get to some much lighter, fun conversation about college hoops and stuff, is this has to be another reminder to all of us, myself included. Uh, go hug a loved one. Call somebody. Tell them you love them. Because, man, I mean, I don't know about you guys. I don't want to, you know, push my thoughts onto you guys, but I don't. I, I immediately thought when I saw the report, when I saw the headline, I thought of Kobe Bryant. I thought of that, that pit in my stomach, the way that we all walked around for days and weeks just in a haze about the idea that this guy that we loved watching, that we loved uh, you know, having in our lives was no longer with us. Now, thankfully, Tiger Woods is okay, but this just shows you. He's driving down the road, maybe going a little bit too fast according to the police reports, but... It, he almost lost it all, and somebody almost lost their father. Somebody almost lost their son, and it just it, it made me realize again how important all this is, how precious this is. Um, and so, go hug, hug a loved one. That's my last thing. I promise. Let's get to some fun stuff. Let's get to some loose stuff. But I did want to just briefly touch on Tiger Woods because it is the biggest topic. 